Silencers, suppressors. If you've never owned one, obtaining one can seem pretty difficult to the point of reaching mythical proportions, magical even. Today we're gonna to talk about what a suppressor is, legalities, reasonable expectations, and some tips that may help you if you decide to go that route. As usual, if you came here for something specific and don't wanna hear me talk about stuff that you don't care about, there are chapter markers down below so you can find what you're looking for. And if you like my channel, please consider subscribing, smash that like button, follow me on Instagram. That stuff really does help out the channel. And with all that out of the way, let's get started. If you've ever seen a blockbuster Hollywood film or a Garantham intro, you've likely seen one of these and you likely know what they do. But a silencer or a suppressor is a sound attenuating device that has the distinct and combined advantages of usually significantly reducing the sound of a fired shot, but it also has the advantage of reducing, if not completely eliminating, muzzle flash. And uh, that's what it is. One of the things I've heard brought up around the topic of silencers is, are they legal? Well, yes. The short answer is yes. The long answer is also yes, most likely for you. Suppressors are federally legal and federally regulated by the ATF, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms as an NFA item, the National Firearms Act, which was originally enacted in 1934 and it allowed the regulation of short barrel rifles, short barrel shotguns, uh, machine guns, any other weapons, and suppressors. So yes, generally you can own one, but they are highly regulated. So if you own one without paying the proper taxes to the ATF, you could be in some serious trouble. Uh, on the state level, they're also legal in most states. And if you live in a state where suppressors aren't legal, your best bet to obtain one is moving to a state with more common sense. The next thing I've heard brought up quite a few times is why buy a suppressor? Do you need a suppressor? Probably not. You probably don't need a suppressor. But first off, and most importantly, is because America. Because you can own one. So exercise your rights. That's literally the only reason you need to buy a suppressor. We have freedoms and liberties in this country, albeit hindered by legislation, but you can still have one, so America. For practical reasons, there are two main factors to consider, and that's sound attenuation and muzzle flash consumption. Though as an added bonus, suppressors can reduce the felt recoil. Not as much as something like a brake, but those tend to be deafeningly loud, so uh, a suppressor might be an all-around good option for you. Sound attenuation is, to me, the biggest factor to consider when buying a suppressor. When I initially bought one, I bought it strictly for the cool factor, but eventually the magic wore off and I found myself putting it on the end of my barrel every time I went to the range because the sound attenuation was significant. Most, if not all, suppressors are not advertised to be hearing safe, and they may not be but uh, it's a spectrum. So the times to me when this has the greatest benefit is long range shooting, shooting indoors, and especially hunting. Times when you don't wanna have ears on at all for non-sustained fire or, uh, or you would otherwise need double hearing protection. 
A lot of people also run suppressors on their home defense setups, and there's some controversy on whether this is a good idea or not. Um, make your own thoughts, do your own homework. John Lovell from Warrior Poet Society has a good video on that, so yeah. As far as muzzle flash concealment, do you need to conceal your muzzle flash? I don't know. The apocalypse is nigh, maybe. Whatever the case may be, muzzle flash in a contingent environment can be a detriment. So having a device that conceals your muzzle flash and attenuates the sound of a fired shot can be a major advantage. Now, by this point in the video, you may be going, I'm sold, I'm gonna buy one. Thank you, Principal Caliber, and you're welcome. Could there be any downfalls to owning a suppressor? Yes. The first and foremost being the massive horde of people that are gonna to wanna to be your friend and your range confidant. The Travis Haley to your Garantham. But aside from all that, the biggest barrier to entry is probably gonna be the price. There are some cheaper options to get into the suppressor game, but aside from the cost of the suppressor, you are gonna to have to pay a $200 tax stamp for all NFA items. So if you get into a quality suppressor, they're gonna be closer to $1,000 and when you add the $200 tax stamp, it gets pretty steep. Next we have some absurd wait times. The ATF has just brought back the Form 4 e-file, which is said to reduce wait times significantly down to just a few months. But if that goes away again or you choose to file your Form 4 under a paper filing, then you can expect wait times of close to a year. That's right. There's no better training for delayed gratification than buying an NFA item under a Form 4 paper file. Third, tertiary is a non-administrative item and that's an increase in gas and back pressure in your weapon platform. So if you're using a rifle platform that uses direct gas blowback like a traditional direct impingement AR-15 or AR-10 platform, this can lead to very, very dirty internals or excessive wear on some of your components, so you may need to clean it more often or get an adjustable gas block. Then again, this is kind of a non-issue for some weapon platforms, but one more issue is that you do get gas blowback in your face if you're shooting something like, again, a traditional AR platform. So they make charging handles like the Radian Raptor SD that can kind of mitigate some of this gas, but it can be kind of annoying getting that gas blown back in your face. And you're also exposing yourself to that gas, so maybe get your lead levels checked every now and then. So maybe if you've made it this far in the video, you're thinking, I still want one, and I think I'm gonna pull the trigger. Yeah. Well, uh, here's the deal with Form 4s. You heard me mention that earlier, and I'm gonna read this so I don't misquote myself. An NFA item that is being transferred from a person or entity to another person or entity is done through an ATF Form 4 application for a tax paid transfer and registration of firearm used to request approval to transfer a National Firearms Act firearm subject to transfer tax liability, typically submitted for a transfer to an individual or legal entity such as a trust. That's a mouthful. So if you're thinking a suppressor is not a firearm, you would be correct. But like I said, since it's regulated under the NFA, you need a Form 4 to transfer it. So when you buy one from a store, they, as the legal entity, have to have a Form 4 on file approved with the ATF to transfer it to you. Now hang on, we talked about e-files and paper filing and year wait times, but it's not that bad. So the easiest, quickest, most surefire way to do this is to go to a class three dealer in a gun store and they'll be able to give you resources to help you understand the process better and walk you through the process of obtaining one if they're the seller. And maybe even if they're not, you know, they're nice like that. Another way that you can buy a suppressor is through Silencer Shop. This video is not sponsored by anybody, but I love Silencer Shop. They're amazing. And they've done some amazing things for the NFA community to make the process of buying a suppressor really easy. Two of the things traditionally that are kind of a pain in the neck are you have to get fingerprints on file and you have to get a passport photo on file. Well, Silencer Shop has a guide on how to take passport photos 
upload it to Silencer Shop so they're on file for your filing. And they have a kiosk system and most, not most, but some class three dealers where you can go in, digitally scan your fingerprints. They have guides in the store for how to do all that. And then those are uploaded to Silencer Shop for your filing. So it makes it really easy. Aside from that, when you purchase a suppressor and a tax stamp and you have those things on file with Silencer Shop, they'll send you documents to sign via DocuSign and they have a lot of information in the emails they send you for how the process works and what you can expect, what you need to sign and your expected wait times through an NFA tracker. They just do a lot to make the process really, really, really easy and to keep you informed. They give you a lot of resources and overall it's a really good system. And aside from your initial scanning of your fingerprints, you don't even have to leave the house. Another win for prospective class three purchasers is the reintroduction, like I mentioned, of the Form 4 e-file. They said that wait times are expected to be as low as 90 days, which is unfathomable to me, but good job, ATF. Thank you. So that's it. Suppressor ownership in a nutshell. I remember back in the day, if there was a suppressor at the range, you had to be some kind of operator or a rich uncle or something like that. But as more people become educated on the process of obtaining a suppressor, the practical benefits and companies like Silencer Shop and a lot of class three dealers help to streamline the process. It makes it easier and more commonplace for people like you and me to own suppressors, which is a good thing. So I hope this video helped to answer some questions for you or made you laugh just a little. We'll see you next time.